such a wonderful service this morning, amen. I think yeah. it's so important that we incorporate the young people that are still in the body of Christ, amen. Yeah. Our next generation service is basically for those under 30, amen. And so uh, those under 30, and so we need to really incorporate them when they are still in the house of the Lord because we know that many of them are no longer even worshiping, amen. And so put your hands together again for her one more time, amen. <laughs> So anytime we actually come together during our next generational services, I like to actually teach something that is uh, based on them and their age group and different things that we can do to help them. And so we're going to have a word of prayer and then we're going to get into the word. Father, we just come right now, Lord God, just to thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you for your presence that has been with us, Lord God. We thank you for just using the young woman of God in such a mighty way to just speak, Lord God. Father, you spoke through her, and for yeah. that, Lord God, we just say thank you. Thank you Lord Father, God. I pray right now that in the midst of this teaching, it's not a serious, heavy, strong teaching, but it's a fun teaching, but a needed teaching. Amen. Yeah. And so, Father, I just ask that you use me right now. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As you're taking your seats, I want you to open up your Bible, and I want you to turn to um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, that is in the New Testament. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. I don't believe that I'm going to be before you long today, uh, but the Spirit of the Lord is in control. And so, uh, today's title uh, is help them, don't handicap them. Amen? Amen. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 13, if you're there, say, I got the word. I got the word. Amen, amen. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I just want us to read one passage of scripture, amen? And that is verse 11. And the word of God says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, everybody say it. But when I became a man. Next part. I, I put away childish things. I'm going to say that one more time, and then when we get to I put away childish things, I want y'all to repeat it. So when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, everybody. I put away childish things. I put away childish things. Things. Amen. Paul said he spoke, he understood, and he thought as a child when he was a child. Some things that young people do should not surprise us. Why? Because they are children. Hello? They speak, think, and understand as children. And so let me give you an example when I say some things shouldn't surprise you. Uh, that our young people may do uh, because of the way they think when they're children. First of all, let's, let me use this example. When you're dealing with young kids in 8, 12, 13, 11, and everybody get their first boyfriend or their first girlfriend, you know you can't tell them that they ain't in love. Okay? I, I, I'm telling you, it, it could be the little boy that just hit them on the playground. They ain't never did nothing, amen, but you know that little crush that you have on your little first love or whatever, and you just feel, they just feel like they just in love, and they really think that they're going to be together forever. Y'all know back in the day, girls, we used to do this stuff. We used to write stuff together, the number two, and then to ever, and then to four, and then, four, and then ever. We used to doodle all type of stuff and things of that nature, and nobody could tell you that you weren't in love. Nobody could tell you that that wasn't going to last forever. But to a child, oh, we're going to get married. Our baby going to have green eyes because his eyes is green. And, you know, he going to have long hair. And, you know, I mean, you know, because this is what females would do. You know, we, we would start looking at the boy that we like, and then we begin to thinking about what our children will be like. Because in our mind, as a child, this is forever. And so as a parent, you already know that this ain't even going to last that long, yet alone forever. But a child's mind is totally different. So when you understand where they are, you don't try to go back and forth and really try to convince them. Because guess what? You was once a child. That's right. And you thought like that too. Mm -hmm. 
And so those of us that have made it past the childhood years, we know that that's not a reality 99.90% of the time. Amen? That they will be with that person that they had that little crush on when they were a little child. So guess what, people of God? Children do things because of their level. Because of the level that they are on. However, things should eventually change as they what? Grow up. The key word is should. Can somebody say should? Should. Let me tell you something. There is no greater turn off than an old, full, grown, childish person. <laughs> Big and grown, but childish. Childish. Never mature. Very, very immature. That burns me up. I don't know about you, but the reality of it is some people, or all people, should eventually what? Grow up and put away childish things. Paul said, when I became a man, when I basically grew up, when I matured, I put away childish things. And so the way a young person develops has a lot to do with how their parents raised them. See, even when this baby was talking about how we, the adults, we supposed to be the example, guess what? We talk about the young generation, but are they out of control because of us? Mm. Are they the way they are because of the way we are raising them? Are we setting bad examples for them and they're simply following our examples? I mean, she hit on that thing today. And so the bottom line is we play a major role in the life of our young people, we the adults. And so we need to help them and not handicap them, amen? And so there is so much more to parenting people of God than conceiving a child and giving birth. Anybody, any female that has a cycle and gets with the male has the ability to be able to conceive, give birth, and bring a child into the world. But how many of y'all know there is so much more to parenting than that? Hello, is something in the room today? Glory to God. I'm feeling something over here in this area. Hallelujah. But anyway, anyway, there's some of y'all don't even know what's going on, but that's all right. There is so much more to parenting than conceiving a child and giving birth. Can I tell it? I just want to tell it. I ain't going to tell it yet. Anyway. Children are like sponges. Amen? They are like sponges and they soak up everything. My question to you adults, what are you teaching the young people? What are you really teaching the young people? Not with your lips, but by the things that you do. What are you teaching them? And so we know a familiar passage of scripture, Proverbs 22, turn in, Proverbs 22, verse 6. And I just want us to look at uh, uh, just that one passage, Proverbs 22, verse 6. Bless the Lord. For those of you all that are tuning in via live stream, it is a pleasure to have you to worship with us this way. Amen. There are some of you that are faithful and committed to tuning in, and we thank God for you. Amen. And so Proverbs 22, verse 6. This is a familiar passage of scripture. Many of us know it. Amen. And the word of God says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I like the New Living Translation because it says, direct your children onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. Remember, I did a teaching before that taught on training your children and I talked about how it goes beyond just the spiritual things. See, we think that as long as we teach them how to pray and teach them how to read the scripture and, and things of that nature and, and, and teach them how to do church, that that's all this too. And no, no, no. As a parent, we need to do more than just uh, uh, putting in the spiritual things. That's very important. And so we want to teach our young people to think right, to talk right, and to live right. We want to show them the right way to live. And so I had a question. Has anyone noticed that our young adults today have a sense of entitlement? They have a sense of entitlement, amen? Always expecting others to do for them. And if so, have you ever wondered?
wonder why. Yeah, they parents. They're parents, amen? They have a sense of entitlement. We got one person shaking their head. You disagree? Come on, devil's advocate. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Why, you, why, why do you think they have a sense of entitlement? She said she believes they have a sense of entitlement because of their parents. You were shaking your head no. I believe it's the system. Oh, you believe it's the system. What I'm saying is that I believe. Come up here. I want to hear you. Because somebody else may be tuning in and they want to hear you. So, you know, you say it's a system, but, you know, raising them started in our home. Come on up. Come on up. So, I just want to hear you. You say, you think, you do agree that they, many of them have a sense of entitlement. Well, yeah. Okay, and tell us why. I don't believe it's always the parents. parents. I don't believe it's always the parents. I believe that, you know, the parents do the best they can. But at school, they pick up things. They learn things. And then they feel as though that they, have, they, can't, they can do whatever they want to do. The system tells them that the parents are not allowed to discipline them in a way that, they, that the parents see fit to discipline them. When they go to school, they get to do whatever they want to do. When they get back home, they bring that same, that same learned behavior home. Okay. And then it puts the parents' hands behind their back. So it's not always the parents, because the parents want to do what they want to do, but then out of fear of losing their children, or out of fear of what people may think, or even losing their job, they pull back. Amen. And come on up here, man. You, you, uh, teacher folks, amen. Come on up here and share with us, teacher, mother, minister folks, amen. Share with us why you believe that, uh, the young people of today, and I'm talking about those, you know, like, come on, little kids only, amen. I'm talking about, you know, they grow up and they still under that, under that 30 mark and things that they need to have a sense of entitlement. Why do you think so? I believe that it starts with the parents because the sense of entitlement is that I believe that the young people believe that you're supposed to do certain things for them simply because their parents gave them so much. Mm -hmm. You got kids eight years old, nine years old, walking around with iPhones. They don't have no job. So they had to get their iPhone somewhere. Mm -hmm. So as they get older, nowadays, the entitlement is that you do something for them, they, they don't know how to say thank you anymore. It's like, you're supposed to give me this because this is who I am. You know, I raised my daughter that when you get gifts, you send, I mean, I'm not old school, but when you... When you get gifts, you sit down, you write a card, and you thank everybody that has given you a gift. They feel they're entitled. Oh, you're supposed to give this to me because I graduated from high school. I graduated from college. I did this. So they think they're entitled to it. There's no there's no respect about what, you know, you ain't supposed, everybody's supposed to give you nothing. But it starts at home with the parents. That's my belief. Simply because you give them too much, we out there working hard, not even home with them, giving them all this stuff, all these gadgets, so they believe that this is the way that it is. It's supposed to be this way. You know, I've given young people gifts for graduation. I mean, I haven't heard thank you since, but that's the thought pattern. I'm entitled to this. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on up. Amen. You know, this is uh, uh, another but the truth ministries, and sometimes it's interactive, sometimes it's not. Amen. And so and sometimes you never know where you get stuff from. Because even as my mother was saying how she put it, raised me like that, Jasmine was in the back looking at me because she know was, I, you need to send a card. You need to call them right. I mean, yeah. You need to fight them. And, and not even realizing it was just instilled in me, but I instilled it in her too, and I would get on her all the time. Come on, and they have to do that for you. I mean, I know maybe your grandfather, and I know he may send you something all the time, but hello, call, say thank you, whatever. Come on. Well, I agree totally with what mother folks said. However, when I was eight, they had iPhones. Okay, so the children today, that's what they're accustomed to. Not to say it's right, not to say it's wrong, but that's how they learn. That's how they use that. I'm agreeing with what you're saying 100%. But uh, I ain't getting no extra sketch. <laughs> you had to be here to understand that. Amen. Come on, sir. And Sin Lee, I want you to think about it because you're one of our young people. And I want you to tell me, do you think young people today have a sense of entitlement? Have a mindset. I didn't give my son that sense of entitlement because I let him know you have to work for things. And I let him know that you don't want to be taken advantage of. And I've always told him, if you're going to talk to somebody, give them eye contact. Let them know that you're serious. Be firm with what you say. Be firm with what you believe. And I also told him that um, just because someone has 
this remote control car, I'm not saying you can't have it, but right now it's not within the budget. And I tell them, I'm not going to spoil you like you see all these people give stuff to their kids. And one more thing, television. They see what's on these TV shows, Housewives of Atlanta, uh, Rich Kids of L.A. It's appealing to them because they get to see how the other half live, and all of a sudden they want what the other half has. So I always tell them, I say, you can't live that lifestyle. For two reasons. One, you know why, and the other one, you don't have the money. <laughs> so that's just, that's, just, uh, um, that's just the way I've done things. And when my son called me, he told me, hey, that's, I was clear with And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, I love y'all too. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, you know you've done your job well when you let them know how it is from the, from the beginning. You know, so you don't want them to get out there and expect things. But I'm like, if you want that, you pay for it. Amen. And Amen. you don't have it. <laughs> so you don't have the money for it. Uh, but uh, one more thing real quick. Uh, I, I, I work with this lady whose daughter is in college. I'm not going to mention the name. And her daughter had called her and said, Mom, I need $800 because I'm going to, go to Paris. Uh, and I need money to, to spend. The mother sent the money to her. She spent $400 on a pair of sunglasses. Mm. And the other 400 on something else. Then the girl calls back and says, Ma, I need this bill paid. The mother pays it. Mm -hmm. sure. I said to her, I don't know why you did that. I said, but I could never do that. And I talked to my son about it. He was like, Dad, I'm not going to do that to you. I said, son, I love you too. <laughs> do you have something that you would share? I mean, I don't want to force you, but if you do have something to comment, we want our, you know, young person. Well, I think that um, some of our teens or young adults think that we're entitled to, like, things. Personally, I don't feel that way, but I know there's a lot of people that feel that way. Um, so I know, like, I have my friends, I talk to them, like, oh, I need a phone, I need a phone. But I always say, like, oh, but I understand my mom doesn't have the money yet. Like, I always understandable. But for them, if they don't get it now, it's like they give their parents, I guess, they go crazy. They don't do what their parents say. They get angry. And also, I feel like it also depends on the culture of the teen or the young adult. Because I know, like, some black families, they won't allow um, certain things to happen compare it to a white family, they'll like, they're very, oh yeah, sure, have this, have that. And when the black kid sees, like Brother Vernon was saying, how like they see that kid has, oh, an iPhone 7, or the new pair of shoes, or their fashion from top to bottom, they will want things, and they'll probably do things that their parents would never, like, make them do, but because of all the stuff, like now, stuff is very important to us. Like for some reason, I mean, I probably, uh, if it was for generations and generations, but stuff is important. And if you're not with the culture, then <laughs> you're not like cool or anything. And I mean, I sometimes, I mean, I like stuff too, but I understand there's limits to stuff. You know? Amen, amen, amen. And so the bottom line is there's, there is a sense of entitlement. And when you think about entitlement, entitlement is belief that one is deserving or entitled to certain privileges. Amen? And so guess what, people of God? We cannot raise competent adults if we, the parents, are always doing everything for our kids. We cannot raise competent adults because they're going to grow up and like I said, one of the worst things you want to see is a grown person that hasn't matured. They're still childish in so many ways and in their thinking. And so, you know, we're not going to raise competent adults if we keep doing everything for our children or our grandchildren. Amen? And so we handicap them when we do. We handicap them when we do everything for them. Again, we want to help them, not handicap them. When you think about handicap, handicap is a disadvantage that makes achievement usually difficult. So if we're doing everything for them and we handicap them, we make transitioning in life difficult.
difficult for them. We make becoming independent and on their own difficult for them because we do everything for them. And the reality of it, the flesh part of them would love that. Because like she said, they into the stuff, they want this and that. They would love that, but that's not beneficial. And so young people, after this teaching, your parents may stop doing some things for you. <laughs> so I still want you to love me if they stop doing some things for you. Amen? And so they may stop doing some things for you after this teaching uh, uh, because they want you to become competent adults. And so don't get mad. Just realize that they are trying to help you and not handicap you. And so I want to talk about a couple of things that parents need to stop doing for their children in their teen years. Uh, uh, how old are you, 16? All right, all right, 16, amen. You're not dead yet, but how old are you? 11, okay, all right, so, you know, you're not far. Some of these things, you know, y'all a little grown at 11, so y'all 11 is like teenagers now, so yeah. some of this may can apply. <laughs> But, you know, for our teens, I want you to think about some of these things that we need to stop doing for our young people to handicap them. You know, and even as I was preparing for this, I was looking at my own life and how I raised my kids, and I'm like, mm. sometimes when you see how you always did certain things for them, you see how you, 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 you handicap them. Amen? And so one of the things that you need to stop doing, parents, how do you get up in the morning? How do you get up? Okay, the young girl says, I have an alarm, but my mom wakes me up. Guess what? You want to raise competent adults? The first thing that you need to stop doing is stop being their human alarm call. Stop being their human alarm clock. Stop waking them up in the morning over different things that they have to do. Most of them have cell phones. And we know cell phones have alarms on them. Yes. But we know sometimes they are so immature because they don't know how to stay off the phone long enough to let it charge so that when they go to sleep, the battery may be dead. So guess what? Take away that excuse that my phone was dead. Buy an old-fashioned digital alarm clock. Put it in the room. And let them wake themselves up in the morning. You handicap them because guess what? They want to go away to college. Uh huh. They gonna move out and get a job. What you gonna do? Still be calling them? Waking them up? I used to get so mad at myself because I got to the point. I said, I'm not waking you up for school, work, or church. Cause sometimes stuff that they may, if they want to get up and go somewhere on the weekend. You ain't got to wake them up because it's something that they want to do. It's a priority to them. They will wake themselves up. Come on, sir. They will wake themselves up. I used to find myself every time, every Sunday, I'm running downstairs. Jazzy, get yourself up out of that bed. I'm talking about she was over 18, okay? When she was still in the house, get up out that bed. Okay. Then, you know, they want to hit the little snooze thing. And then next thing you know, she always the last one showing up in church, right? <laughs> but the thing is, waking up, and I said, I'm going to stop. I had to shut myself down because that's what I used to do. Come on. Okay. A lot of people, I'm old school, okay, and I don't apologize for it. Um, a lot of times we say, I'm old school, so it's almost like old school is wrong. No, it ain't wrong. It's not wrong. Don't apologize for being so still holding on to some standards that was taught to you. And I feel like we say we give the kids too much and we handicap them. For real, for real, we handicap capping ourselves as parents. Because a lot of times we don't even put rules or, 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 or boundaries on the child. Kids, they don't even have a bedtime. They go to bed when they feel like it. When I was coming up, that TV was off. The lights was off, whether you were sleepy or not. Whether you were sleepy or not, you're going to close your eyes or look at the, look at the dark. Okay? And if, and if you hear some noise, the parents are coming in there like, didn't I tell you to go to bed? Go to bed. You know, and it's like, you know, as parents, you know, we just, this, in, a, in, a, in a sense, I kind of agree with Mary because 
we allow the outside outside of our four walls because our culture starts within our home. Because we, we can look at our kids and they don't have a reflection of us. That's why you can have good parents and their kids don't look like their parents. You can raise them right, but at the same time, they look like outside. But nowadays, you know, we, we need to start and you can't wait till they're teenagers. They are already shaped and molded by the world. By, t- by teenage, you got to start car age. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're too scared to even be stern with kids nowadays. You know, you got to teach them wrong. What's wrong? You got to teach them early. I used to get butt wheels when for getting up late. If I missed the bus, oh, <laughs> I wouldn't miss the bus no more. <laughs> I remember one time I missed the bus. I, I, I walked to school. I caught a ride. I hitchhiked because I wasn't going back in the house. I was not going back in the house. So, I mean, it's like, you know, we don't have, kids don't have no fear of uh, uh, consequences. There's no fear. Ain't nothing going to happen. They already know what grandma's going to say. They already know what my mama's going to say. They can tolerate it. They don't, if, my, if my mother said, wait till your daddy get home, I felt like I was on death row. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, we don't have, as parents, we don't have the authority that we used to have. We, we've, our, our hands are tied. And you got, especially like nowadays, we have, I don't know, I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I know t- nowadays the family structure is, is not as different. Yeah. We got a lot of blended families. And guess what? If you're in a blended family, you're a, bl- you're a husband or a wife, and, and, and you're a step parent, you ain't got no authority like that for real. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Not really. You ain't got no as a, as a biological parent nowadays. But if you're a step parent, it's hard. You, you can have somebody at five years old, you and they like at five years old, but your wife might feel a certain type of way how you discipline. And vice versa. So that is real. That's real. I don't care how you look at it. You have to work it out some kind of way. How you gonna discipline a child? But for real, blood is thicker than blood is thicker. Okay, blood is thicker blood no matter what. It's a lot of things that I used to do. Jasmine knows a lot of things I used to dis- disagree with, but my hands were tied. I used to be so so disturbed because I wasn't raised a certain that certain way. But having things, be able to do what I want to do, and you know, and I and I and it's like sometimes kids can look at it like he hating. You know, I ain't hating. It's just like it it hurts you in the long run because guess what? If you if you never got it and you late all the time and as a child and there's no consequences when you get older you go to school you're late for your classes when you graduate if you grad if you graduate when you graduate you go to your job you get your job you're late for work all the time it carries on work work ethic ain't don't start when you get a job work ethic starts as a child. You know what I'm saying? Then, and even in even in that, you're taught as a child to be able to appreciate when you do get something, to be able to appreciate it because you work, you earn for it, you work for it. Like Vernon said, you work for things. Well, well our kids don't work for nothing. Chores don't exist no more. No. Chores. You go to Oh. <laughs> no, nah, I mean that stuff. That stuff. Today, kids got so much. I mean. They, like you said, they got iPads and all these gadgets. Going outside is like a punishment to them. You said, go outside and play. Uh, it's, it's, it's hot. <laughs> Kids don't even want to sweat no more. I remember I took Killer outside. We was playing with Rock. He started sweating. I'm, I'm starting to sweat. I'm going back in. I said, what? It's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Where, where the switch happened? But there was a major shift. Yeah. And kids, I remember my my son. We told him going outside. Do you know he stood at the front on the front porch like this, like? <laughs> and then he rang the doorbell. I was like, Nah, find something to do. Kick some rocks or something. He stand out there. Then he rang it again. I said, What's wrong? There's bugs out here. <laughs> I mean, I'm just giving you an example of how things have changed. 
I, my, my mother used to have to make me come in the house. Yes. I didn't eat. She said it's time to eat. I don't, do I have to eat? That's what I want. I would want to be outside, but hey. Amen, amen. We have Vanessa who tunes in on a consistent basis, amen. Vanessa from Fairfax Village, amen. And she said, let's not forget that CPS, Child Protective Services, also plays a big role in how parents discipline their children. Because a butt spanking today is considered as child abuse. And so even when you think about it, outside influences are interfering with the way that many of us are, uh, are raising our children. But guess what? Let me tell you something. And I don't care what Child Protective Services say. Sometimes you got to just take authority and let your children know the state ain't running this house. That's right. Okay? The state ain't running this house. I don't care what the world say. I still whip your butt. Okay? And 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 if you if, if you thinking about calling nine one one, I'll dial it for you and whip your butt again. Get locked up and get out and come whip your butt again. <laughs> So sometimes we have to let them know that the school, the world, none of that dictates this household. We stand on the word of God, and the word of God says, don't spin a rod. Amen. Beat them. They won't die. That is Bible. Bible. Hello, y'all. I am here. Bible. And my mother used to commence a wailing on me. Amen. <laughs> she would just punch me like I was a dude in the street, jack me up in the corner. It was on and so the bottom line is, I survived. Hey, hey. So I survived. Amen. Let me move on. So bottom line is, stop making up the bed for them. I mean, stop waking them up. Yeah. Stop being a human alarm clock. Amen. Another thing that we need to stop doing to handicap our children is we need to stop making their breakfast or packing their lunch if they don't eat at school. Okay? Sometimes they don't like what they get at school. So they want to take their lunch. And there's nothing wrong with them taking their lunch. They're a teenager, why are you making their lunch? They're a teenager, why are you making their breakfast for them? Why are you doing this for them? You are handicapping them. Guess what? You go to work. You earn the check. You buy the groceries. Can they at least put it in a bag? Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, and so guess what? You know, it gets to the point that they, 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 I, I, I am one that I serve, and I'm, I'm honest. I do serve my husband, amen? You know, uh, and, 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 I, and my grandson, you know, my husband will see me serving my grandson. And can my grandson will eat his food, and he'll just call me. Grandma! My oldest one, Khalil. You know, because he wants something else, and I come in there. And grandpa be like, what you want, boy? You get up in there and go in the kitchen and get it yourself. Because, <laughs> look, my grandson be sitting like, keep on the hill. Got his little tray, chilling, watching the TV. Grandma, I need some more French toast. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so when they are young, you do do that. But we have to get to a point where we transition them, Okay. And so, you know, once we get married, we know that, guess what? Wives and husbands do certain things, amen, but a man is capable and able to go because he knows there are times I don't always fix his plate or serve his drink, amen? But for the most part, that's just something that I do. And so we don't want to handicap them to the point that they cannot function. So guess what? Stop making their breakfast and packing their lunch if they don't eat at school. And as parents, like I say, you provide the food, let them make it themselves. Also, it gets to a point when you need to teach them how to cook. Do you know how to cook? Yes. All right, amen. At a certain age, they need to learn how to cook. Not just the females. Amen. Hello? Amen. Not just the females. Amen. Males need to learn how to cook. A lot of times you have mothers that want to teach their daughters how to cook. But every man ain't going to be married automatically when he grow up, grow up and move on his own. <laughs> and so we need to teach the males and the females how to cook as well. Amen. They may not cook all the time, but teach them. Have them in the kitchen learning how to watch you and uh, uh, pick up the recipes and things of that nature. Amen. And so uh, uh, teach them, the boys and the girls, how to cook. It will pay off when they go away to college. It will pay off when they go away to college and move out. Okay? Because when you go to college, if they stand on campus, they can go to the grocery store and cook their own meals versus paying that fee for 
them to get meals in the cafeteria because they can they can get a, a a card right what is it called again a meal plan they can get a meal plan when they're in college but sometimes guess what if you got a child that's used to home cook meals and then they go you know they get a meal plan but they always eat that stuff that's prepared you know teach them at home how to cook it's cheaper y'all it's cheaper if they can cook their own meals. They have a kitchen in their place a lot of times. It depends on the dorms that they're at. You know, she ended up having a dorm that had a whole kitchen and everything. Guess what? Go to the grocery store. Yeah. Cook your food. Do your salmon. Do your chicken. Things of that nature. And so, they will learn quickly that cooking is cheaper than eating out. Yes, it is. Good See, one thing about it, when they are young and at home and, you know, that you, you have them to look at their money. I, I would have my daughters to look at their money. Everything is Chipotle, Chick-fil-A, uh, this, you know, all, every, all this fast food stuff. How many of y'all know they ain't home no more? Yeah, and I be asking, she told me, no, I be taking my lunch to work. It costs too much to eat out. Because <laughs> the reality, when you're at home and you don't really have no real, real responsibilities, you get your little check, you know, you eating out in the fast food places like it ain't nothing. And you realize when you get out on your own that uh, it's costly when you have other responsibilities. So guess what? Let's stop handicapping them, amen? And so, something else that we need to stop doing to handicap our children, at a certain age, we need to start allowing them to fill out paperwork. Every parent knows at the beginning of the school year, all these forms come home that need to be filled out. We need to allow them to fill out paperwork. Because you are preparing them for the future to be competent adults. If it's papers that need your signature, they can do everything else but you sign it. I ain't do this, y'all. I will fill out all the papers. Here, Mom, all these papers. Every time you turn around, I may mean, go out to school here. And I'm like, you know what? They, things really needed to change. And I had a real reality check. Because when it was time for us to go to apply for her at College of Southern Maryland, she did her first two years there. Parents, that's a good thing sometimes, that first two years of college and then send them away to the university. Anyway, I'll never forget, we went to College of Southern Maryland. And you had all of us for the orientation. All of us parents are there with our children. <laughs> this can we go to college, our kids. This is how we looking at them. Oh, they said... All the young people, you're going with us. All adults, stay here. Hold up, wait a minute. What y'all, what y'all about to do with them? They separated us because they felt like they should be at a particular point in their life already, where they could go in there and have an orientation with the instructors and the faculty and fill out the necessary paperwork. And I'm sitting there and saying, Lord, I hope you fill out the paperwork, right? You know, all this other stuff. I'm going through it in my mind because guess what? I was doing it for her all the time. Learn from my mistakes. I'm telling y'all, learn from my mistakes. So guess what? When they, when, they, when they start going to college and filling out applications and things of that nature, if you train them down in high school, they will be prepared when the time comes for them to go to college. Guess what? They got to fill out paperwork to get a job, even if it's on a computer. Sometimes you handicap them so much that every time they're filling out paperwork, they're calling you. Uh, Mom, I'm jamming back there laughing. <laughs> Mom, what's this? What was the time? I'm like, I done told you this a thousand times. Why are you still calling me? Because sometimes we make them too dependent upon us. And so we need to stop that. Amen? Uh, 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 let them do it by themselves. Uh, sign what needs to be signed. Uh, one, of, one of the other things um, you need to do, and let me tell you this, young people, hear me, young people. Read your paperwork before you sign it even if your mama give it to you. Right. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, even if your mama and daddy give you some papers and say, here, come, come sign this. That's what my mama did to me, y'all, because it was my mama and I just trusted her. And she always told me, you better read before you sign anything. She gave me the paper. I ain't following her instructions. I read, I, I signed the paper. I finished my time at Howard University. Next thing you know, I got this, this bill. In my name. <laughs> and I'm like, hold up, what is this? She said, oh, that was the student, student loan you signed for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I ain't know that. I didn't know I was signing 
something that's for saying that I'm going to be receiving a bill when I finish going to college. And so I'm telling you, read before you sign. Something else that you need to stop doing to handicap your children, parents, amen? Stop delivering their forgotten items. Stop <laughs> delivering their forgotten items. <laughs> you, you at home at work. <laughs> Mom, Ma, I left my lunch at home and I don't have any money. Can you bring it to me? Ma, I didn't bring my homework. It's on my desk. Can you bring it to me? And this is the last day that we got to change, that we got to bring it in. Ma, I left my uniform to change up for after school and I don't have it. Can you bring it to me? Ma, I left my ID so they ain't trying to let me come and they want me to go to detention. Go to detention. Because <laughs> guess what? If, every, if, if you do that every time, Every time they call, it's not going to help them to be responsible. You will find yourself fussing and driving. <laughs> We're still going to deliver. And, and I'm saying, because I'm going to tell you, I did some stuff that I know I shouldn't have did. I feel like they took advantage of me because I was one that worked from home. Amen? And I'm like, if I was on my good government job, what would you do? But they think they knew I was home. Bring. And so guess what? Then the bag hit. Mom, please, I don't want this to happen, please. Guess what? Tell your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. You know it's a word. You can tell your children no. Because if they realize that you're not going to constantly come to their every aid, they're going to learn to do things better, and you're going to help them to become competent adults. Amen? And so delivering for forgotten items doesn't make them responsible. Sometimes they need to experience, it, experience the consequences for being irresponsible. So if they have to stay after school because they forgot to do a project or whatever the case may be, let them do detention. Whatever's going to happen, sometimes you have to learn from the consequences. And as parents, again, stand your ground. Don't give it to the begging because they will beg and they will beg and give you all these reasons why you have to do this. No, you don't. And then... Don't make their failure to plan your emergency. Oh, don't make your teenagers failure to plan because they want to what? Procrastinate. Say the word. Procrastinate. Because they want to procrastinate. Don't make their failure to plan your emergency or their procrastination your problem. Oh, how many of y'all parents in here? Those of you all that are tuning in live stream, how many of y'all remember the infamous science fair projects? Oh, oh, yeah. Guess what? You get home, and all of a sudden, they tell you, we need to go to Staples right now because I got to get a science fair board and things of that nature. Uh, excuse me. You didn't, wh when does it do? Tomorrow. <laughs> when did you get it? About a month ago. So now... You're just pressing me to want to run you out here and get supply and then try to help you to come up with a project? <laughs> Don't allow their failure to plan to become your problem or your emergency. And then, teenagers, so do you know how to sort laundry? Yeah, I do. Okay. And do you do your laundry? You do it with your mom? Yeah. Okay. So if your mom didn't want to, you could do it all. Oh, <laughs> hmm? uh, yeah. Yeah? You don't want to do it, though, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? We don't want to do it either. <laughs> but you want to look cute. You want to have on clean clothes. <laughs> we don't want to do it, but it's a part of life. So guess what? Stop washing their clothes. I'm telling you. They become teenagers. Stop washing their clothes. You're trying to make them competent adults. Teach them how to sort out their laundry and then show them how to use the washing machine and dryer. When our son first came to us, he didn't know how to do his clothes. You know, because, you know, he, he lived with his mom for the first part of his life. But when he came to us, he didn't know how to wash his clothes. Oh, James was on that big time. 
I was nervous because I said he gonna break the washing machine. <laughs> That's what my thought was. He gonna break the machine. It's just it's gonna be messed up. James schooled him, taught him, put him on a program. He knew that when he got up, he, he, James had a program like him. But James is programmed like a certain thing. Saturday morning, Darren knew he wasn't sleeping in late. It's laundry day, and he got up and he did his clothes. Even on the long weekend, sometimes I'll be like. It's Monday. Monday, you ain't got to go to school. You can do laundry on Monday. He was programmed, though. You know what I'm saying? And so the thing is, teach them. That's responsibility. It's, wrong. it's responsibility. And a lot of parents ain't doing it. You still washing your teenager's clothes. And I swear, if you washing your grown kids' clothes, I swear, I will find you and just want to pat, 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 pat. <laughs> Nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to do it, but it's something that has to be done. And so a sign of that, teach them how to sort. And then sometimes you got to put restrictions on them. And you got to tell them, you ain't leaving them out of this house until this is done. So we wind it down. Another thing that you need to stop doing, parents, that you handicap your kids, Cleaning their bedroom and bathroom out of frustration. <laughs> Jasmine, do you have some words that you would like to share with the people of God? <laughs> Cleaning their bedroom and bathroom out of frustration. Guess what? They know you won't fuss, but sometimes they know you won't fuss, but you won't clean it up. Anyway. Father, father knows this, don't you? Say, mm, mm, mm. Anyway, guess what? I asked my own kids. I said, I, 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 I'm not understanding this. What is the problem? Why do we have to go through this all the time? And you know what they told me? They said, well, for real, Mom, man, you fuss, but there ain't no real consequences. <laughs> Bold with it. Tell you right to you. I wanted to know. Why? Because there wasn't really no consequences. You were fuss about the room being dirty, picked this up, but it wasn't like it was no real consequences. So then it got to the point, I'm like, okay, I was staying there. You're going to do this. You ain't going nowhere. I don't care. <laughs> At one point in time, I was be like, I put the club on the car. That's when we had clubs. <laughs> but it's one of those things. You would tell them, I know you want to go. Oh, you want to go out today? Okay, well, is your room clean? Because you're not going anywhere until your chores are done. And so stop doing it out of frustration because they will expect you to. Don't allow them certain privileges if their chores are not done. Chores, chores, chores. Speaking of chores, I don't believe in giving allowances for cleaning up your own room, your own house, your own bathroom. That's just your reasonable service for the house that you live in. So why should you get paid for doing what you should do anyway? It's your room. It's your bathroom. I'm going to pay you to clean up your clothes. I'm going to pay you to make up your own bed. And we wonder why they have such a sense of entitlement. Because of things that we do. And then we touched on this. Stop buying any and everything for them. Stop buying any and everything for them. Some items you must provide as parents, but their desires may need to be purchased by them or they will do without until they can afford them. You know, my kids used to see certain people who was young like them and their parents always took them to the nail salon and they always had the acrylic nails and all that other stuff. I'm not paying for that. <laughs> oh no, that is a that is a major luxury. When you get a job, you can get your nails done. When you get a job, I'm, I'm not paying for your tattoos. Hello, I'm not paying. There's certain things I'm not paying for you. You know, just because you want it, because everybody else doing it. Once you get a job, then there's certain things that you can do. But right now, you better put some polish on yourself on your fingernails and keep them nice and clean. But that weekly maintenance, maintenance. Just because everybody else is doing it? Entitlement. Entitlement. And then sometimes when you have done it so much for them, when they've been younger, they feel like they can't live without it, they will be out on their own and they will not pay their light bill just to get their nails done. 
because their priorities is off. We have to teach them proper priorities. And so I have never in my life met so many children that have graduated from high school and have never worked. Mm. They have never worked. I mean, literally, graduated from high school, out of high school, let's just even say, you know, the, the summertime is there, the, the year that went by, you ask them, you know, you, you got a job, have you ever worked? And they'd be like, no. Nah. Ain't never had a job. What are we teaching them? Come on, sir. What are we teaching them, amen? Because the bottom line is, we have to teach them something. Now, if you have a child, come on up here. If you have a child that's active in school, and they're in sports, and they're doing things of that nature, they're active, they may not have time to really work a regular job, okay? But some kids just go to school, and they don't get involved in nothing. They got a lot of free time on their hand, and they need to work. We need to teach them. I don't care if you teach your little boys how to make money with cutting somebody's grass. Okay. <laughs> cutting grass. And, 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 and I don't care if it's a matter of, come on, Deacon James, I want you to say what you was going to say. Come on. Well, you got to stop talking. <laughs> he said, I got to stop talking. Hey, come on. Come on. Say what you got to say. Come on. I was just going to say that, you know, kids today need to, well, let me just say it like this. Uh, so there's a lot. Nowadays, you see so many elderly people or older people shoveling their own snow, cutting their own grass. When we was coming up, you, you, you just didn't, I mean, young people would just do it. You know, knock on people's doors and say, hey, sir, can I cut your grass? Can I, can I shovel your snow or whatever? I remember I used to go door to door with my lawnmower and just ask people. Or with a shovel, walk around the neighborhood. You just don't see that no more. You just don't see kids with no uh, uh, ambition, like no, no, no drive. Yeah, it's it's like they, like you said, they entitled. So therefore, they don't. They feel like they get a job. I couldn't wait to get a job. I couldn't wait to. I get, got a real. When I say a real job, because I was working ever since I could walk. As far as like, because to me, throwing chores and all that and cutting the grass and do it, that was work to me. And, and, and when I got older, when I was like 14 and nine months, I got my work permit. And I've been working ever since. Like working a real job, getting taxes out, stuff like that. But before that, I used to go to work with my father. And I tried that entitlement one time. I asked my father, it was, it was like you said, to do chores. I was doing something. It was it wasn't my normal chores. It was outside of my <laughs> job description. I guess you could say. <laughs> I was kind of like helping him with the car and do, moving stuff and all kind of stuff. And and I asked him. I was like, I was like, Dad, you gonna pay me? And all I remember was getting back up, <laughs> <laughs> getting back off the ground. He said, Don't you ever ask me? Am I going to pay you? Who do you think you are? I'm the only one getting paid, right? <laughs> so it was like, you know, I'm, I'm saying that to say, you know, we have to earn the right to be an adult, to be entitled to something. You know, we, we just have to, we just have to, the steps is levels to this. You can't just come into this world and think you're going to be entitled and you're not equal to your parents. You're not equal to the, you got to earn that right. And one more example, when we was talking, you were talking about Khalil, the reason I would say, boy, get up there, you know, go get your own stuff, this, that, and the other, because honestly, this is how I think, and I may be wrong. There's no way my grandson should get the same entitlements as me. <laughs> I heard this right right here, because I don't want to do some stuff. I don't live through life, you know. He's sitting back. I'm talking about Khalil used to sit back with his iPad. Lit like like this in my bed on my side <laughs> with his leg, you know, like a grown man. Grandma, what do you hook up? What do you hook up from his iPad? Grandma, I'm hungry. Can you fix me a sandwich? Well, you know, whatever. I'm just giving an example. Can you fix me some? And I'm like, I'm looking at him like, <laughs> come on, sir.
um, stop giving your teenagers rides. Teach them that to cast the bus. Because, well, at a certain age anyway, I, I would say maybe around 15, 16. Um, but let them find their own way to work. Let them find their own way to get to where they have to go. That, that's just me, because that's what worked for me. You know, let them learn how to catch the bus. Because you're going to be out doing something that you have to work with. They got to get to where they got to get to. They have to know how to get there. And um, real quick, um, what you want to do also to get them out the house, just say we go on some place and take them to the park. And just play, shoot, play basketball or just, just get them out the house. And the more you get them out the house, you say, I know, but get them out the house, take them to the park, play basketball. I took my son to the park and we took a remote control car together. But doing that, he opened up to me and he started talking to me more because I took the initiative of have to come down to his level tonight. Amen, amen. And so, and even with the ride situation, it all it always depends on where you live at. Some places there is no public transportation. Right. My thing is when, when my daughters would get jobs outside of when they started stop working for me, my thing is find out the bus line that works there. Right. There may be times that I can take you, but if you need to get to work and I got something to do, you need to make sure that you can still get to work. Yes, you know, I didn't want them to totally be dependent on me in that way. And so, again, you know, like I said, many of them have never worked, you know, uh, uh, but yet they have the latest iPhones, tablets, the Jordans, the nails, and the feet are done. They have different weaves every week, amen. They can't afford to buy their own hair, but they got different weaves every week, tattoos, and the dime of clothes, and they ain't paid for none of it. And so, and you wonder where the sense of entitlement comes from? I think about it. My mother was 17 years old when she moved out on her own. 17, when she got her own place. I went back and I had to pull out my father's death certificate in order to really clock when I was living on my own because I was in my own place when my father died, living up in Holly Hill condominiums, me and my daughter Jamea. That was in 1990. I was 23 years old and moved into my first apartment by myself with my daughter. I was one that always worked. I started with a babysitting job. I started doing people's hair in the neighborhood that allowed me to, and they actually paid me. I, I worked at Subway. I did different things to bring in money. And one thing I can say, I do thank God that that was passed on to my children because I started them out working for me as shampoo techs. They worked. They got paid. Amen? I, if I paid another tech, why not pay my own? They would put in long hours with me in the salon. They worked. Then eventually... Jamie got to a certain age, she went and got her uh, work permit and started working at Wendy's. They never felt like they was too good to work at a fast food place. Some of these kids feel like they are too good to work at a fast food place. You got to start somewhere. Yep. And so guess what? She did that, and I had a stipulation. Because guess what? They like money. Oh, they like having their own money and being able to do what they wanted to do. But the stipulation was you can only work while in school as long as your grades are up. If your grades fall, you ain't going to keep a job. Because I'm not going to give you the benefit of getting money to do what you want to do and you failing in school. No. So they always kept their grades up. And guess what? Can I tell y'all, it blessed me as a parent. Yeah. Both of my kids, basically throughout their, most of their high school years, they want their own clothes. I approve and disapprove of what could and could be worn. Because my thing is, I don't care if you spent your own money. You ain't going to just buy something that I don't approve of and think you're going to wear it because you done spent your money. Ask Jamea, we done took many clothes back. <laughs> okay? We took many clothes back to the mall. Boo, that ain't getting worn. You are not wearing that. And then it got to the point, if she knew what I approved of or dis and disapproved of and still got it, it got to the point, okay, you want to keep playing me. I ain't playing this no more. We ain't even taking it back. You done lost your money because it's going in the trash. So the bottom line is work ethics. Teach them how to get things on their own, their desires, take care of their needs. But we got young people today that are good with still being at home at 25 and 30 years old. If everything is still being done for you by your parents, your rent, the rent is paid, food is supplied, free water, heat, air, and electricity, and, you, and if you have a job and you can spend your whole check on your Ciroc, your weaves, your tennis shoes, your clubbing, if you can do all that, why would you leave home? Why would you leave home? And so the bottom line is we got to put some things in order. And so the church is the place where we teach more than just the Ten Commandments. 
We need to deal with practical, everyday issues as well. And so this is our next generation service, and I like to deal with matters concerning them. And we see that many are off track, and often because of lack of training and guidance. So let's try and be the solution to the problems that we see. Let's help them and not handicap them. Amen? Amen. Amen. That concludes this teaching on today, and I pray that it has blessed you. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. <laughs> and like I said to young people, get started with your parents, stop doing things, know that they're trying to help you. Amen. They're just trying to help you. Here in Nothing But The Truth Ministries, this is the time of our service where we give it to the house of the Lord. You may not be physically here, but you are blessed by these teachings. You may be a faith person that faithfully tunes in on a consistent basis. Guess what? If you was in the house of God with us, you will probably sow a seed when it's time to give in the house of the Lord. Well, guess what? You're not here. You're still being blessed, and you can still sow a seed. You can go to our website www.nvttministries.com and click the link sow a seed. Amen. No seed is too small or too large. I pray that you have been blessed by this teaching. Amen. Let us put our hands together as we receive our wonderful worship leader. Amen. Presider of the hour, Sister Sin Lee. Amen. Who will lead us